Welcome to the Bob Allen's HealthCast, episode number 520. What tests do you order before first visit and why do you order them? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. What tests do you order before first visit and why do you order them? That is an essential question that gets asked by literally hundreds of people every month. And people that call your office, mm-hmm. people that write in, people that download the forms, regularly will contact you and say, how come you're doing this? Why are you doing this and this why way? why so many tests? Why? And- yeah, because you you have a list of, you, you have, if I, if I contact your office and I, I go online, I download the new patient package. Mm-hmm. And one of the things in the new patient package is a prescription for me to go and get blood tests Mm-hmm. a week or two in advance so that mm-hmm. you have the information from those before I show up in your office mm-hmm. for my appointment with you or, or with Dr. Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Both of you want that information. And I look at that prescription and it lists uh, all kinds of technical <laughs> tests th- you've never heard of. <laughs> well, I don't even know what they are. You know? <laughs> but they're blood the, tests. The bun test or creatine test. Yeah. or mm-hmm. I, I don't know what that is, mm-hmm. but you know, mm-hmm. and you have a reason for asking for them. So how many blood tests do you order for a new patient? The panel is 18 blood tests or blood panels. Sometimes there's 10 tests in a panel. Okay. So usually is a large number of vials that they'll take from you and send through. and. Oh, yeah, maybe like a dozen. I know, and I usually hear that on my first visit. You bled me out, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I think you have extra blood. Yeah. You know, most of my patients aren't anemic. Because they're done with menopause and they're not bleeding every month. And right. So, so it's not really a health problem to give blood, even 18 vials of blood. They're little vials. Yeah. So I tell them I am looking for, not only am I looking for your testosterone level and your estradiol level and it, see if you're in menopause or not, because those are the, that's kind of the basic little package that everybody would do. But I want to know if you're healthy enough for me to give you pellets. I, n- I need to know if you can take hormones, process them in your liver, if your liver is normal, and actually, and if we can actually then get them out your kidneys. You have to have good kidney so function. So there's a blood and good test that will tell function. you liver function. There's one that will tell you kidney function. There's one that will tell you uh, sugar, glucose. Those, that's all in one panel called the metabolic panel. Okay. So, so But the types of tests are, are the basic estrogen testosterone tests. Then the health tests, are you healthy healthy enough? Blood count, metabolic profile, um, inflammation like CRP. Uh, I want to know where you stand. Then I want to look at the things that testosterone can make better. Okay. So testosterone in most men and women, when we give it to you, it lowers your LDL. So that's cholesterol. And, some, and sometimes and usually the HDL, the, the good one, goes up. So the bad one goes down, the HDL goes up. So that's good for you. Now, with other types of testosterone, that doesn't work. But with pellets, it does. So I want to find out all the different things that can improve when I test you like a baseline. What was your LDL before and after? And then I can show you, look, you're healthier. Mm -hmm. You know, because it it does a lot of good for you to be healthier. It does you mental, uh, mental health for you to know you're better, like that your cholesterol is not as high as it was. So, so I do those type of tests because testosterone can make that better, including inflammation. Um, sometimes testosterone can get rid of anemia. Estrogen uh, also can and lower the lower the FSH and LH, the hormone tests. Then I look at the things that can actually imp- get worse with testosterone, and they usually center around. Uh, red blood cell count and iron in your body. So I'm looking at your ferritin, which is how much iron do you store everywhere? If you have too much, 
then we have to we have to kind of change your treatment. We have to be careful with well, you. Iron we have is, to give is blood. also called a heavy metal. It's not the only iron, one. Well, iron is something that we need a lot of, but if we have too much, it becomes a heavy metal. Okay. So if we store it in our tissues, it can damage our tissues. All right. And there are several different genetic problems that people can have and not know they have. All right. So not only am I showing them something they have that could hurt them in the future. Which you discover is, that. You I say, discover that. Hey, guys, that. you got a problem developing here. Right. And, and one of those things is red, blo- red too blood cells. Too many red cell blood count. cells. It, too many red blood cells is a genetic disease, erythrocytosis. And many men already have high blood counts, and very few women, but mostly men. They already have high blood counts. And then when we give them testosterone, it goes up. So we don't want their hematocrit, the, the percentage of red blood cells in their blood, to be higher than 50%. Because that means your blood is really thick and your heart has to work really hard to pre- push it. It gets sludgier. Yeah. It's, it's like having a clogged drain. So we don't want that to happen. So so for the high red count or the high iron, those are things that we can anticipate and send you to dump blood, you know, every three or four months. If you can donate, great. But if you're on some meds you can't donate with, then we have somebody in our office that will... will Take a unit out, and then so it's like a donation. I mean, you like come in and you and you do get a little bag full mm-hmm. of blood taken out of your arm. Mm-hmm. So your volume diminishes, mm-hmm. which makes it less thick. It, yes. it becomes thinner, mm-hmm. and so the issue of too many red blood cells, I mean, above fifty percent, mm-hmm. is a non-issue if you have it taken out and thrown thrown away or donated. But you have to which, continually, if you're on testosterone, or even if you just have that issue uh-huh. without testo- without adding testosterone. You have and to some give men do. Blood. So without yeah, testosterone, right. they... They do. Okay. But you have to give blood like every three months or every four months. I have some guys that give blood every six weeks. Wow. You know, and there's... And honestly, they say that people who give blood, which I don't, which is probably bad, but uh, people who give blood live longer. We don't know why. Huh. But th- that's a separate, a different genetic issue than the too much iron. So I'm looking for things that I can make worse, and I don't want to make them worse. I want to do this safely, such as um, in both women and men, you can have a menopause or a low testosterone um, picture, but you have from a high prolactin. That's a hormone from your pituitary gland that's right here. And the prolactin can rise, and it mimics low testosterone, low estrogen. So not only will I see normal estrogen, normal testosterone, but I'll see a very high uh, prolactin. That is a key to a problem that could be a tumor in your pituitary gland. If it's over 60, it's usually about 25, less. If it's over 60, oops, we've got a problem. You need an endocrinologist and you may need a brain surgeon. So I find that two or three times a year. Just from the blood test? Just from the blood test. Wow. And... It should never be elevated unless, like, women are nursing or or, um, or they're pregnant or if somebody is smoking a lot of dope, it so goes up. Are but, you are you saying that it's caused by higher levels of testosterone? Like no, you, it isn't. It has nothing to do. T- testosterone and estrogen don't have any effects on it. It's just that it's something I don't want to be fooled and give somebody estrogen and testosterone when really what they have is a brain tumor. So the prolactin will throw off your testosterone right. and estrogen counts right. itself. And so you measure the prolactin as well as the testosterone and estrogen right. counts. I don't want to mi- I don't so that want to one doesn't give you a false positive. Miss something yeah. that could be deadly. Okay. And in general they're not deadly. They're treatable and met with medicine and they don't even require surgery necessarily. But but it's very important to find that. The other thing it does is prolactin, estrogen and testosterone don't really have a lot of effect on prolactin, but prolactin has a lot of effect on estrogen and testosterone. Right. So if the prolactin is very high, then you don't feel your testosterone. So I'm also stopping a problem before it starts mm-hmm. in my patients so that I, if they have a high prolactin for any reason, whether it be a tumor or, or too much THC or uh, marijuana, then we have to change something to bring the prolactin down or we'll never get a really good testosterone level. Is that typically something that comes from an abuse like too much marijuana or is that something that happens as you get older? No. It it can happen. It can happen at any time? It can happen from too much. um, It can happen from just a tumor that has nothing to do with anything. It just happens. 
It can happen from um, it, it can happen from um, too much a touching breasts. If you have a lot of breast activity, then you can get a high prolactin, but it won't be as high as a tumor. Okay, mm -hmm. and too much THC or marijuana can cause it to go up, but not as high as a tumor. So we can kind of tell by the level whether it's a tumor range or not. So normally it's 25? 25 or less. Or less. And In so if you get up around 50 or, or 60, 60 you, you start worrying about it. About having a tumor. Right. Okay. So, that, so those are the tests that I want to not get confused with diagnosis and make sure I check. Um, there's another test called hem, uh, homocysteine which is something, a new test, people don't usually get it, but they genetically can't take normal B vitamins. And what happens is high homocysteine will make you feel bad. So I'm giving you testosterone so you feel good and you're completely healthy, and you have a high homocysteine. That makes you not feel good. It also puts you at risk for strokes, independent of any hormones, strokes and heart attacks. Even if you have a low cholesterol and low inflammation, high homocysteine can cause you to have a heart attack. So I don't want my patients getting sick. So that's a test I threw in because I know it's they're not getting it from their other doctors. So that's an, and lastly, I check all a hormone from every one of the glands because I want to make sure all their glands are working. You know, they're, they're pituitary. So that's LH, FSH, prolactin, some others. And their their adrenal gland, their parathyroid gland, their thyroid gland. If I don't, normalize all of those while I'm replacing testosterone, people don't feel completely better. So my goal here is that people are replaced with their hormones as the foundation of treatment, the very first step. And then I look for these other things that go on top of that like bone to density. make people healthier. Yes, like bone density. Testosterone and estrogen are the best treatment to increase your bone density, that and vitamin D. But now we have 10 drugs with lots of side effects that don't really make um, thick bones. They make radiologically better looking bones. So as you get older, you can develop brittle bones because your bones become less dense. They dissolve. And then you fall and you break your bones. You break your hip, you break mm -hmm. your shin, you know, what have mm -hmm. you. And that's one of the, you, you see old people all the time that have trouble walking. It can be problems with their knees or their hips but it can also be a bone density problem. Right, and the, the other thing is, you've seen people that walk around like that. Yes. That is their spine crunch, kind of being crunched down and so you, causing- So you shrink, I mean you so, literally well, get you shorter. you shrink and you're bent over because these, love, these lovely uh, vertebrae are now squeezed and off center and, and it hurts, so you mm -hmm. hurt all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep your bones thick with testosterone, estrogen, if you're a female, and um, vitamin D, then you won't have that issue. And so lots of times we don't even order bone densities because we know it's going to go up. Mm -hmm. but, if, but if somebody has a high risk of having a familial osteoporosis, sometimes I'll order it because it could be something different, like a um, parathyroid tumor could cause it. So sometimes I'm looking for these other problems yeah. that could masquerade as just low estrogen, low testosterone. But that's the outcome. I mean, osteoporosis is the outcome of losing your hormones. It's the most obvious outcome. Right. So you lose your hormones, women in their 40s, men in their so 50s. So gynecologists generally will track your, your osteoporosis? Usually. We used to have a, a machine in our office, and then insurance quit paying for it. Because <laughs> they don't want to know? <laughs> I guess because if you know, then they have to pay for another drug. Right. Okay. So, I mean. If and, they, those, and those drugs have side effects. And they have side effects, and they're expensive. So. <laughs> Which is a side effect. So if you get estrogen, estrogen and testosterone, it's fixing like 20 things. Not mm -hmm. only is it fixing your symptoms, but it's preventing disease in the future and preventing those diseases of aging. So but this panel is the first panel. And I go through each test, not just the bad tests, not the tests that are abnormal, but the good tests. So when uh, Dr. Sullivan and I see a new patient, we sit down with their lab tests in front of them and go, this is your CBC, your blood count. This is your hemoglobin. It carries your oxygen. It is at the right level. So you have enough red, 
uh, iron in your blood to carry your oxygen in your red cells. These are your white cells. That's in the same panel. That gives you your immune system. If your immune system looks adequate or it looks low, testosterone also improves T cells. So usually white cell count comes up to normal. So do you get like a, a bar graph that sh shows you within ranges this is where everybody is? Or do you get specific numbers? Um, Quest, will, Quest is one of the labs we work with. Uh -huh. And Quest will give the patient the bar graph, but just gives me the numbers. Because okay. they don't know how to interpret it. Right. Uh, yeah. And let me just put in a side here. A lot of their, um, re their reference ranges is what they call it. But uh, the range they think you should be in does not mean you're healthy, especially if it's a hormone. So in the health tests, you know, the CBC, the blood count, insulin level, that kind of thing, they have the, a, an adequate number or range for somebody who wants to be healthy. But when they get to hormones... Is it, is it based on the age cohort? Like, this is what an 80-year-old should be? This is what a 70-year-old should be? A little bit. They change the blood counts. Like, some, like 80-year-olds will have a lower red count and hematocrit. Mm -hmm. So they, it does appear that they do that. Um, we didn't talk about growth hormone. I test for growth hormone. And they give you what the average person that they've tested... Mm -hmm in their lab is, well, that doesn't mean they're healthy. It doesn't mean they're young. It just means your age, your age, the buddies that you run around with, do you think they're healthy? I don't think so. I mean, I don't want to be judged against other 65-year-olds. I mean, I, I think I'm considerably healthier than that. And But if my level is lower than it should be, I want to know. So in general, the people that come to your office tend to be middle-aged or older. Mm -hmm. You don't consider like young athletes who want to have more testosterone and pump up uh, for treatment. Another good reason why I get the lab first and their histories first before I bring them in because I don't want a young person with normal testosterone levels and no symptoms except they want to be bigger to make an appointment with me and then have to explain myself why I'm not going to give them testosterone because it's not good for them and it's going to it's it will damage their testicles and it'll keep them from being fertile. I mean, I don't want to go through that. So I look for people who are good candidates who who I can help. So one of the reasons I do the lab work and the history first before we make an appointment or mm -hmm. anything is that we look at those and make sure you're in the right age range. And you don't have some kind, you haven't had brain surgery or a trauma that might have left you with low testosterone. A traumatic brain injury. Right. Or maybe brain surgery. Okay. I have two guys that are um, 40, 30 something and they've had brain injuries, but they've also had surgery on their brain, taking out certain parts, Right. which then leaves them with hormones. It was in the area of the thalamus and the hypothalamus and the uh, pituitary. So... They don't have the right uh, stimulation for their own testicles. So, so I do take care of some young men who have gone through this, but I don't take care of teenagers who just want to be bigger. I mean, this is a treatment for prevention of illness or, or taking care of some, uh, a deficiency that somebody already has. So are they taking like anabolic steroids? Yeah, they want anabolic steroids. And I'm never writing that. And a lot of them get those illegally from China or other places. Germany. Russia, yes, and, and, and who knows what's in them. Part of their athletic endeavors, they try to bulk up their muscles. Right. And um, it's not good for them. But you do see some younger men. Yes, I do. Men. Who have terribly low testosterone. and Because it, of a genetic condition or a disease issue or? Yeah, um, Kleinfelter syndrome. Those are boys that have very low uh, testosterone. They, they are not usually fertile. Some are, but usually aren't. Um they're, they have a lot of estrogen, not much testosterone, and they don't look very manly. And the, I, I have treated a couple of those kids in high school because of their genetics doesn't change. I mean, they're not going to get better. And they need testosterone to be socially So they're not going to naturally normal. grow into being better. No. You can get them better, but have, you have to do it with an, an additional treatment that right. they won't have unless you do the treatment. Right. They're not, they're not going to be normal without testosterone. And they're never going to be fertile and they're not if, going to if be they're fertile. not fertile already. So I'm not hurting their fertility. Right. So, yeah. So I have several of those boys or men now, 
And I have several 30-somethings who have such low testosterone, I don't know what happened to them. They didn't have radiation. They didn't have, they may have had trauma to the testicles, but, and to their heads, but their testosterone is so low, they have to be replaced or they just can't, they can't function. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're married. They have, you know, they may have had a kid a while ago, but they, it's, they're not. They've lost that ability. Right. Right. And so. And giving them testosterone pellets won't bring that back. It won't bring fertility back. Okay. In fact, it may prevent fertility. But it, but it can. That's why I don't give it to boys or yeah. men who are fertile and have normal levels. Right. I mean, I just, I, I have to be very careful about who I give these to because I don't want to damage. I'm not in the business of hurting somebody. I'm in the business of helping people and right. making them healthy and making them well. And if they can't make a good decision about their health care, it's up to me to not do something that would be dangerous. And your goal is to measure all of the existing conditions. And then figure out a dosage that will restore the testosterone and the estrogen to young, healthy levels. So what their bodies made when they were young and healthy, right. not comparing them to an age cohort of 70-year-olds so they can be among the 70-year-olds. So, so, yeah, well, testosterone gets to a critical level for men easily by 55, usually by 50. So if I compare... Um, a 70 year old man to other 70 year old men, they don't really have much testosterone. Right. And women have n- literally none because their ovaries just stop making it when they stop making estrogen. Right. Or before. So, um, so I have to compare men and women to young, healthy men and women and before I treat them just to diagnose them with low testosterone. Then, so that I have to, I have to change the, what they call, a reference range because the reference range doesn't mean anything anymore. The labs just have not figured this out. You can't just compare a 70 year old to other 70 year olds because they're all low on testosterone. I mean, it and growth hormones the same. You have to compare them to young, healthy people. And the paradigm for that is how we take care of bone density. When we take bone density and we compare women and men to a an ideal, we compare them to 29-year-old males or females, not Which ideal bone density at 29. At 29, right? Right. We don't we don't take take a 70 year old and say you should be like the 70 year old. We right. say, we get a T score which is compared <laughs> we, to young, healthy because comparing we, we need sick to make your people, bones more porous so you'll be normal. Right, and so yeah. t- comparing sick people to sick people is not a way to have the optimal range, and that's what's wrong with the labs today. They take their own numbers from testing sick people for the last year, and they then make that the reference range. And then, so I'm looking at numbers that are supposed to be, I mean, they're not ideal, they're not optimal, they're not even healthy in terms of hormones. They're just, they're just what other people my age are. Right. So we started this conversation by saying, why do you ask all these questions? Why do you take all these blood tests in the beginning before I ever even come to your office? Hopefully, we've been able to explain somewhat how complex all of these dynamics are and the information base that Dr. Sullivan and Dr. Maupin need to have so that when they come in and and sit face-to-face with you and spend an hour talking to you about your lifestyle, your life history, your medical history, Mm -hmm. and they have the data from the blood test, then they can determine accurately if you're a candidate for testosterone or hormone replacement and a preliminary dose estimate so they can try to get you back to good, young, healthy normals so that you live a healthier, longer life. I have one thing to add. All right. And that is that by not making you come in and talk to me for an hour and then ordering your lab and getting your history, then I save you a visit and you have to pay for your visit. So I I save save you the cost of the visit in my office. So that's one less visit that you have to pay for. So that saves you money, saves me time and money. Well, and typically if they have insurance at all, the insurance will pay for the blood test. They don't Mm -hmm. pay for the testosterone treatment, but they pay for the blood test. Sometimes the men's do, but not always. Pay for the testosterone treatments. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if they don't have insurance then your office will allow them to use the bulk rate deal. The discount that we get from the lab. That you get from the lab. Which is like... Because you're not making money off of that. No, 
but it is some it is so much less than what the lab charges you if they were just sending you a bill so we have you come in if you don't have insurance or have a high deductible we have you pay us the rate that we have to pay the lab basically so it's a wash for you mm -hmm. but it's a benefit for them mm -hmm. and it's a necessary benefit because you can't determine treatment without having the information right thank you for listening thank you Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.